Welcome back to our video tutorial series on the Falling Object game. In this video, we're going to be adding a power-up to our game. So currently, uh, we've got our game as it's been, uh, and now what we want to do is, um, at random times, when we uh, hit one of our falling objects, we're going to have it drop a power-up. And uh, the power-up we're going to do is one that will give us an extra life. So extra life power-up when we uh, shoot one of the falling objects. So let's break this down. First thing we're going to need is um, some sort of a uh, power-up uh, graphic here, some sort of a sprite for that. So let's take a look at our uh, sprite sheet here for our falling objects. And um, let's drag this little slider so we can see him. There we go. All right, so let's pick one of these sprites for our power-up. Let's use this blue triangle. I'm just going to drag him out here into the scene somewhere where we can see him. There he is. Um, and let's set him up to be a power-up. So we're going to need to be able to collide with him. So he's going to need a collider. So let's add component, physics 2D. Uh, let's give him a box collider because he's kind of box-shaped. And we're going to be hitting him from the bottom, so we can just uh, leave the collider as is there. Maybe pull it in a little bit on the X, so that we don't gr we have to get a good hit on him. Don't just graze him. All right, and then we should also probably give him a tag here, so that we can identify uh, him from other objects that might hit our player. So let's make a tag. We'll add a tag, um, and we will. Uh, make a tag that's called power up. Then we'll click back in on him and assign that tag for power up. All right, let's also rename him while we're here. So this is going to be my power up. All right, so we got him named, we've got him tagged, we've got a box collider on him. Oh, let's set that as a trigger as well because we're going to trigger an event when he hits our player. And then let's make him into a prefab. So we'll go to our prefab folder here and we'll drag our power up down to the prefab folder. So now he is all set up to be instantiated into our scene. We'll delete him from the hierarchy. Okay, so we've got this power up here. So now when we, a bullet hits a falling object, we want the falling object to um, do all the things that it does already. So let's go ahead and open up our uh, falling object script. In the falling object script, uh, in our on trigger enter 2D, where we have a collision, we're checking for a bullet right here. And uh, so when that happens, not only do we want to destroy the bullet and send that message uh, to the player to score some points, but let's also right here decide if we're going to drop a power up. So we're going to we're going to check to see if we are going to drop a power up. Okay? So we're going to need some randomness here. So we're going to generate a random number and then we're going to check to see if that number uh, is within a certain range and if it is, then we will drop a power up. So let's make a temporary integer variable. Uh, and we'll call this, uh, I guess we'll just call this random chance. And we're going to set that equal to our random. All right, so we have random.range, and we're going to pick between, uh, so let's, uh, if we want to play percentages, we could go a number between 1 and 100, and then we know what kind of percent chance. Um, so why don't we do that? So we'll pick between 1 and 100. All right, and then let's check to see what we got. So now we can say if random chance is less than, so if we wanted a 50% chance, we would put a 50 here because half the numbers, 50 to zero, would uh, trigger this, right? So let's make it, uh, let's keep it about maybe 50 for now. Um, and matter of fact, let's just make a variable here. Um, let's just call it chance to drop. Okay, or uh, chance to drop power up. I know, big long name, but let's try that. So if that's less than our chance to, to drop power up, and let's go ahead and make this uh, variable up at the top. Let's paste it in up here. Let's just make this a public 
int chance to drop power up. That way in the inspector we can set a number and that'll be like our percent chance uh, to drop it. So we can play with it a little bit because this will need some fine tuning. So if it's less than that, then we can actually um, drop a power up. Okay, so that code's going to go right here. That's going to require an instantiate command. And if we use instantiate, we actually have to um, have an object that uh, variable that we're going to make. So let's make a, a game object variable up here at the top. So again, it'll be a public game object. And let's call this power up. This is going to hold our link to our power up that we want to instantiate. And then down here, we're going to say instantiate. And then what we want is a power up. And we're going to put it right here at the position of our falling object when it was hit by the bullet. So we're going to say transform.position, comma, transform.rotation. So that'll cause our power up to drop into the scene. OK. So let's save all this. Let's go out into Unity and hook all this together. On our falling object prefab, we are going to look at the script and we have to now link in our power up, which is this guy right here, our power up prefab. And let's say chance to drop power up is 50, uh, because that way we should get it about half the time and we can test real quickly to see if it's happening. We can balance it from there. So at this point, if we hit play uh, and we shoot one of these falling objects, we should sometimes get a power up. So you see we're getting them yeah, about roughly half the time. Okay, they're dropping into the scene. All right, so there they are. And of course our power-ups are now actually interfering with our falling objects, so we're gonna have to fix that. And they're just sitting there. We are gonna want them to drop towards the bottom of the screen so that we can um, catch them with our player at the bottom. So let's go into our falling object script and make these so that they won't inter uh, interfere with our, our power-ups. So, down here, we're saying if uh, it's not a falling object, not to explode. So it sounds like we need to add another thing to this compare tag. So let's actually just do a, a compound conditional statement here. Let's just say and um, not other dot compare tag. So let's just check against two things here now. Uh, and the tag on this was power up. So now that'll add that to our list of things not to react to. So let's go and double check that I spelled that tag correctly. So on our power up, we have yes, all lowercase power up, no spaces. All right, so that should be that should work for that. Okay, now we're going to need to make a new script for our power up that's going to uh, be responsible for making it move down the screen. So we'll go to our scripts folder here. Let's create a new C sharp script. We'll call this power up script. And we'll open that up in mono develop here. And then uh, in the power up script, we're just going to be moving this guy straight down the screen. So we've done this several times. So we're just going to use transform.translate. So transform.translate. We want to move straight down the screen. So we're going to go 0 on the x. We will go speed. We'll make a speed variable here like we have before, times time dot delta time. And then we'll go 0 on the z. And let's make that speed variable up here at the top public int speed and we can set that out in the inspector so that'll make him drop straight down the screen towards the bottom and then if he gets off the bottom let's go ahead and just destroy him so let's also check then for the bottom of the screen and if he gets off to the bottom of the screen then we'll destroy him. So if transform dot position gets to be less than, let's see where the bottom of the screen is for him, like we've done with our falling objects and such. So let's grab one of them and drop them out here into the scene. 
and then let's drag him down to the bottom of the screen so that we can see where it is. It should be roughly the same as for our falling objects. So it looks like, yeah, about a, maybe a negative 16 maybe. We'll give him a little bit of space at the bottom. So like a negative 16. So let's say negative 16. Then we'll go ahead and destroy him. Destroy game object and we'll get rid of them from the game okay so that should get his movement happening let's go out into unity let's assign this script oh, looks like I had myself a little error here let's go fix it line 20 oh position yes I need to tell it which one X Y or Z Y and let's make this a float number so that we don't have any problems with that should clear my air out. Now let's test that out and let's see if we get one. If uh... all right, so okay, so he's not moving. You notice though that he's no longer interfering with the falling object, so that's good. The reason he's not moving is because I forgot to give him a speed. So if I go to my prefab from my power up and I go look for uh, his script, which I never even gave him his script, evidently. So I'll miss two things here. Let's grab the power up script and drop it on our power up. Let's give him a speed of something like maybe negative 15. Um, remember, this is going down the screen, so I could either put the negative 15 here, or I could put the negative in the script. We'll just put the negative out here for now. Let's try it again. They should actually now move down the screen if we get one. There we go. Now you can see that when I shoot one and I get one, they are moving down the screen. There's a bunch of them. And when they get to the bottom, they are removing themselves. Okay? Now that was moving pretty fast actually, so maybe we slow this down, make it a little easier for our player to get underneath it. We'll try maybe a negative 10. Alright, so now we've got the power up popping into place. And we've got him uh, dropping down the screen and ignoring the falling objects so he's not blowing those up. The next thing we need to do now is handle the collision between the falling object and the player because right now uh, there's no collision happening. When our power up hits the player, we want it to apply its effect to our player, to the game. And in this case we were going to apply an extra life effect to our player. So we have to decide which of the objects is going to handle the collision. Will it be the falling object or will it be the player? And uh, it could be either one. I think in this case, though, because it's going to affect the player somehow, we'll go ahead and have the player do the uh, detection. All right, so on our player, we've got a rigid body already. Um, we need to make sure in a collision that one of the two objects has a rigid body. Our power up, be pulling out into the scene here so we can see it, does not have a rigid body. It does have its collider. So we're good because the player does have the rigid body and the collider. So we're, we should be able to get a collision between the two. That just means in our uh, player script we need to check for collisions. So uh, just like we have done with our falling object we are going to add to our to our um, player script we're going to add an on trigger enter 2d function which will run automatically whenever the player gets in a collision. So let's do that. It's going to be a void on trigger enter 2D. And then we need a spot to capture the information coming in from the other object. So we'll say other, and that's going to be a, a collider 2D variable. All right, so we're all set up. Put our open and close curly brackets in there. So when a collision happens with the player and any other object with a trigger on it, this is going to fire off. So the first thing we need to do is just check to make sure that what we hit is the power up. Everything else we want to ignore. So on our power up, we need to make sure that we've set a tag. So let's just check our power up prefab. And we can see we do have a power up tag here. So we can check to see if it's a power up that we hit through its tag. So the first thing we'll do is we'll say if other dot compare tag is power up make sure that goes in between our, our uh, quotes there so if it's a power up then make sure that's actually a period and not a comma there we go 
then we want to apply its effect. So apply effect. Okay, we're going to put some code in here. Now, in this case, we want the power up to apply uh, the extra life. So if it's a power up, we're going to go ahead and say lives plus plus. And then um, anytime we update our lives, we want to make sure that we're updating our lives text on the screen. So um, if we go up here, we can just copy the, where we're updating our lives. So we'll copy that, bring it down here and paste it. So we'll go ahead and apply the effect of the extra life, and then we'll update the lives text on the screen. And now we have an extra life. We also want to make sure that we get rid of this power up. So uh, once it hits us, we want it to go away. We don't need it to explode. We could do a different kind of a particle effect just to kind of show, hey, something cool happened. Um, I don't think we have time to put that in here right at the moment, but you could do all sorts of things like that. So let's go ahead though and say destroy other game object, and that will make sure that object goes away. Okay, and again, if you wanted to make a particle effect or something else that happens on the screen that says, hey, you caught it, you could do that. If you wanted to do some sort of text effect with your lives text so that it draws people's attention, you could do that. There's all sorts of things we could do here. For now, though, let's just have it give us our life and destroy itself. Let's save all our scripts. Let's go out into Unity, and let's check to see if this is working correctly. So we're going to click on our player so we can see how many lives he has. Uh, in this in his inspector we'll also be able to see it updating up here on the screen so when we hit play and we shoot these guys here we go here comes one and you'll see that mm, nothing happened hmm. let's try that again okay so let's check out and see why that didn't work all right and here's why that didn't work we all make mistakes. I spelled on trigger enter wrong. It needs two G's. Because I spelled that wrong, um, Unity didn't recognize this. It did not call it. So um, there we go. Fix my mistake. Let's try that one more time. Okay, let's see if we can get one of these guys to fall down on us here. Here we go, and I got a four lives, so now I've got five lives. So every time I hit one, it's giving me a life, and it's disappearing. So that's our power-up. It's giving us lives, and it's being taken care of. So that will do it for this video on uh, how to add a power-up to your game. And you can be thinking about all the different types of power-ups you could add to this game and maybe pick something and try it out. See if you can give a scoring multiplier. See if you can make your player move faster for a little while. Maybe make him invulnerable to hits for all. There's all sorts of different kind of fun gameplay things that you could put into your game at this point using similar techniques. As always, thanks for watching. If you're enjoying the videos, go ahead and make sure that you subscribe to the channel uh, so you get updates when new ones come out and have a great day.